what's it like being in a stadium with the champions of England? A sunny day in Manchester. Blue fans taking over the city. Fans with bottles of water and the fans who are far too sensible for that. Fans walking on the pavement and the speedy fans who step out onto the road to complete an overtake. Fans who were there and fans who most certainly weren't, but will be creating their own memories very soon. I grew up just outside Manchester and at my school you were either blue or you were red. Literally, there were more reds than blues, don't get me wrong. But the Blues were always the ones that without fail would be going to the match every Saturday. It's amazing, you know, we've, we've been fans since 1991. Pep Guardiola has come in and he's completely transformed the club, the way people play football, not only at Manchester City but in England in general. When I was growing up, I was one of two City fans at school. The rest was United fans when they had their successful period. But we're born and raised Manchester City fans. You don't have a choice. You're born, you're a City fan, you have a blue shirt, and we're reaping the rewards now. When Pep goes, I'm sure the fans will remain and we'll just relish this moment as being Manchester City fans and seeing this football. City took an early lead and Oliver has got yet another goal. It was really nice to see a load of excitable youngsters and players that otherwise wouldn't get those minutes having the opportunity to show their own what they're all about, including Cole Palmer and Rico Lewis. I mean, Azpilicueta probably thought, what the heck, I'm too old for this business now. It's currently the 25th minute and there's a small section of City fans giving the pass now already. I just want to debunk something by the way, I see so much on Twitter about how Man City fans hate Raheem Sterling. When he got substituted off, the reception was brilliant. It showed that Man City fans, they don't really care. You know, I think Raheem Sterling made some comments about leaving City for one minute, so just absolutely fair enough, and I'm sure he doesn't regret leaving, but it must have been a weird feeling being back in the Etihad where he's had so much success. Um, but the reception to him was absolutely lovely. I think that was that was really nice, really respectful to a man who's won a lot with Manchester City. He made the best decision of his career going to Man City, and he probably made the right decision leaving them when he did as well. There's definitely a culture in this country now where you've got to pitch and wave if you do well, you have to pitch and wave. So here we are then, this is the moment the stadium announcer he calls out what we all know. Jumping balls, 
by Tom O'Dell. It's about to be the moment. No, the Premier League is absolutely not a farmer's league. Even when teams are coming close in the back of everyone's mind, you just know City are going to dominate and take that title. We still have upsets week in, week out. There's so much money in the Premier League that actually I think it's incredibly competitive. For me, sure, the Prem's had the same winner five times in the last six years now, but the reason for that I think is just so different than in all the other leagues. We'll be calling the Premier League a Farmers League when Sir Alex Ferguson never finished below second. It's only if they continue to keep winning in the next five years. If the next five seasons City keep winning, then I'll tell you something. Arsenal, who have led the league for most of the season, they've had games recently where drawing to Southampton, who are set for relegation. You know, losing to Brighton, who you'd go the league, the league leader, you'd think would would cruise that game. Man City are an outlier. If you take them out of it, it's actually a really cracking league with quality and competition. In Germany and much of Spain, it's not even allowed for an investor to come in and just take over a club, make it rich overnight. And that's why these monopolies are so hard to change now. While in England, it's welcomed with warm hands and it can happen any time. We saw that with Newcastle. Just look at the managerial talent at some of the lower level sides. Wolves picking up Eulen Lopetegui. Unai Emery going to Villa when they were in a relegation scrap, taking them to the top end of the table. Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton. Premier League is the most exciting league in in the world to watch. You never know what you're getting one week to the next. And no, I do not think it is becoming a farmer's league. I support a team that came close to winning the title against Manchester City. And there's not many teams that come close to City. As long as you can be smart, the gap can be changed. And a takeover like possibly with United now could change that any time. City are not miles ahead of the rest of the Prem in terms of resources. They just got it totally right and built an almost perfect project now. But I don't think that will stay forever. The best players want to come to the Premier League. The best managers want to manage in the Premier League. Just because one team is super dominant doesn't mean it's a farmers league to see what's going on now is it's like a sight to behold so we owe, we owe credit to pep the players the ownership and uh, this is this is history in the making 